Jeff Love from Two Hacks Garage. Well, if you look behind me, there's John. He's the one that's helped me out with a bunch of stuff in the past, and we're currently building a small block Chrysler for. Well, guys, I'm kind of venturing in to trying to do better with videos, trying different software, and he's really big into the high-tech video stuff. That's what he went to school for. Um, over here, he has got a fancy new camera, sl camera slider. It's actually pretty cool, and we're going to use this video kind of as a test piece. I know I've been doing a lot of what you call engine math lately and showed you different ways to measure and weigh different things. Well, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to be weighing some connecting rods. I know I already weighed a set, but this is the other set for my 302 build that I'm doing that's going to go in the dragster. But what we're going to do off these calculations here is we're going to use the mean average of that on big end and little end to calculate actual bob weight for the crank balancing. Am I going to do the crank balancing? No, but knowledge is power. And really, guys, I want to be able to learn all this to see actually how close I was when I get that paperwork back. So that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, let me show you this camera slider. Give me one second. All right, guys. Say hi, John. Howdy. John says howdy. John brings cool stuff. So this is a camera slider. So he's got different software than what I use. I literally just use my iPhone. Um, but he's got his stuff set up. And he's got it in frame. And what this thing does, it slides across here and back. So it provides a really cool effect when we are in like the time lapse motion. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually start filming. And the first step we're going to do, and of course we're going to use this because I really want to see how this is going to turn out. Um, I'm going to weigh the overall weights and go from there and I'll explain the next steps. All right, guys, so what I did there is this is from the other rods that I did. And on this section here, there's two ways you can do your weights, and I'm going to show both. Uh, previous video, I showed that all. So this video is actually get about getting the bob weight calculation, which I'll show you in a second. I've already done this, so don't pay attention. So what I'm doing here is I'm weighing the overall, getting low high, coming up with the mean slash average. And from there, I'm going to weigh the big end of the rod here. And I'm going to do that on the connecting rod balancing fixture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all those down here. And I'll get my mean for the big one. And then from here, what you can do is you can actually calculate the little end. Basically, you take your big end, my or sorry, you take your overall end minus your big end to calculate your little end. So, but that's not the only stuff I'm going to do. There's another way to do this. And like I showed you in a previous video uh, about how to weigh connecting rods. So what I'll do here is what I'm going to do for these is I'm going to weigh the big end, which I already will have, which I'll write that number here too. I'm going to weigh the small end, which will get you your overall calculation for the big end. I like doing both ways to see which one's more accurate. It should be just about the same. Um, so that's what I got going on. So once I have all of this done, there is a calculation um, that is in here to calculate your bob weight. Now, let me get over here real quick. I know, I got a lot of notes. I'm just one of those dorks like that that likes to write everything down. So here is your calculation on this. There's an online resource I'll put in the description. So long story short, it's all this crazy math. Like I said, I'll put it in the description where I got this from. And I've already got some of the information in here. So what I need to do is go through here and I'm going to have to put in the rod big end, the bearing, so i got to weigh the bearing. Um, your total, it's math. So what, you know, that's a lot. So what basically all this does is this calculation through everything is going to tell you your bob weight. Really hard to explain. That's why I said I'm going to put a link to um, a website where I got this information from. I've read it a million times. I understand it. It's just really hard to explain. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on putting that on there so we can weigh all of the big ends on these and write it down. With that, John's going to set up his fancy camera slider.
All right, well, I got everything weighed out. I weighed all my rods for the 311, uh, big end, little end. I did it both ways where I weighed both ends, and then I did one where I weighed the big end to calculate the little end. You'll have to go back and watch my other video on that on how to weigh your connecting rods. And I also have a video on how to weigh your pistons and all that fun jazz. This video is about calculating your bob weight. Like I said, your bob weight is what gets clamped to the uh, crankshaft um, that simulates your connecting rods with your pistons, your rings, your bearings, and even oil. So what that does is your bob weight calculates that weight. So it's just a, you know, lead shot sometimes or stacked weights. I'll put a picture and show you kind of what that looks like. And they clamp on the crankshaft, which I have one sitting over there. And I have a brand new one sitting over there. So when they clamp that and spin it, it's going to tell them um, where it needs to be balanced. And usually they're going to either drill the crankshaft or they're going to add metal. It really just depends. I don't know yet. Like I said, I still need to call them and get it there, see what's going on. However, like I've said many, many times, knowledge is power and learning all this is pretty actually awesome. It's all that nerd math that you learned years ago that most of us forgot, but now it comes back into play in real life. My little rant, schools need to start teaching practical real life math. Anyway, so here's my 311 and here's my 292. All of these are here are means, so they're the averages of everything I have weighed and I have put them in here. So one of the things is, is what you're going to do is um, you're going to have your piston weight, you're going to have your pin weight, you're going to have your locks, and you're going to have your rings. So you're going to add all that up, and you're going to add your rod small end, and that's going to give you a total. Times pistons throw, so there's going to be two per journal, so that's your reciprocating weight. You're going to take that times 50% to get your reciprocating factor. Okay, now from there, you have your rod, you take your rod big end and your bearing insert, and you add those together right there and you times that two because you're gonna have two of those on each journal. And that gives you right there, there's your total. Okay, now you're gonna add, you're gonna actually calculate oil. You have oil in there, so you're gonna to need to know that. From what everything I have read is what you're gonna do is small block estimates five gram, big block is 10 grams. Everything in here is grams. Real quick guys, if you see this, this here is going to be your factor on everything. 50% everything is going to be factor. 90 degree V8. The factor is different for a V6. That will also be explained in the link that I'm going to put in the video. So let's get back to this. So when you take all this, you add it up, times it by two, get your total, add your oil, you get your rotating weight right there. You add that to your reciprocating factor, and that's going to calculate your bob weight. Get it? Yeah, it took me a while to understand that. To be honest with you guys, I read and read and read and read all this. And I understood it, but until I was actually doing it, it was still kind of that murky, murky, murky math. So, I did the same thing down here. I took my pistons, added my pins, my locks, my rings, my rod, small end. Got my total. I times it by two. Got that. Times it by half to get your reciprocating factor right there. Same thing here, rod big end weight. Remember, these are all means. My bearing, insert, added those up, times it by two. You get that, you add your oil, you get your rotating weight, you add your reciprocating factor, you get your calculated bob weight. I could either be making a big fool myself with this video or I could be pretty close. Um, like I said, still gotta call the balancing shop, still gotta see what they do. But this is how to calculate your bob weights. Hope you learned something. If I confused you, I'm extremely sorry. But if you learned something, extremely grateful. Knowledge is power. Tell you what, guys, it is a whole lot of math. But when you're building engines and you want to make power, well, you got a whole lot of parts over there. And you got a whole lot of parts right there. You got John doing some editing. And you know what, guys? Knowledge is power. All right. So in that video, what I showed you was calculating bob weight. Now, if you watch all my other videos on weighing stuff out, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different weights. You're gonna be weighing the pistons, you're gonna be weighing the pins, you're gonna be weighing the rings, you're gonna be weighing the locks. You're even gonna calculate oil. You're gonna weigh big end, little end, all that. And what I did is all my different numbers I had, I came up with a mean. Now that mean is an average across the board. There's a lot of balancing shops that use that method. I have yet to call the place I'm gonna balance through my, uh, my rotating assemblies through. But this is just to get that average bob weight 
Um, I am also going to look at a couple different methods on doing that. I'm going to ask them, do I need to grind them down or they just want me to do what I currently have with the mean weight or are they going to take care of it? So many questions yet to ask, really don't know. But for this tutorial, I used a mean weight, which is the average. So if you saw there, guys, in this video, to do that, we weighed another set of rods. They're for the 311 cubic inch small block. That's going in the dragster. I weighed out the bearings, got an average on that. And what I ended up doing was I put it in that nice handy dandy calculation that I found online that I read a whole bunch on. And that's Grumpy's performance, Grumpy Jenkins. He was a very high performance Chevy guy. So you can kind of trust the work that he's doing on that. Like I said, I'm gonna put a link into that description so you can go check it out yourself. I'm not an expert, but I'm learning and knowledge is power. So with that calculation, what that did is determine the bob weight. And that bob weight is gonna be used when they actually go to balance that crankshaft. So once the crankshaft's balanced, everything's said and done, I can actually start building these engines and have a whole lot of fun. When that time comes, I'm sure that awesome slider, that John who's sitting right back there, is filming on right now. Well, what he's gonna do, he's gonna bring that. Um, I think he might even bring some other equipment. We're gonna get some really cool shots. Like I said, I kinda wanna up my game on making videos using different software. I got some stuff uploading over there, which I've never done. I've always done everything on my phone, but you know what guys, times are a changing. I'm 45 and I might as well change with it when it comes to technology. But with that guys, until the next one, Two Hacks Garage, we'll see you later.